you did end up playing football collegiately, which is really cool. Where did you end up and kind of what did you end up studying while you were also playing ball? Yeah, they didn't end up going to Stanford, uh, but the coach, Lance Anderson, still remember the guy, very nice guy, uh, introduced me to a, another coach at Bucknell University. Most folks on the West Coast may have never heard of it, but some of the Northeast listeners may be aware. Um, in Pennsylvania, part about an hour away from Penn State, State College. Uh, played football there, played running back. Enjoyed it, great time, played all four years. I actually studied business, um, which is very vague. Everyone knows that, it's yeah. very general. Um, then I, I minored in religion and philosophy and really uh, enjoyed my time there. Um, as I was considering, or as I was graduating, I was trying to figure out what am I gonna do? What's that gonna look like? How's that going to pan out? And I didn't really have any strong desires uh, to do anything specifically. And I th- a part of that is like business in general, right? You could literally do anything um, yeah. with a business degree. So uh, I started considering and, and thinking about what could be possible opportunities and avenues. And someone reached out to me about Teach for America. And Teach for America is this program that uh, takes, you know, college graduates and pretty much puts them in pretty rough areas and allows them to essentially help out um, that school system with new blood. A lot of it's just like, hey, it's energy because you don't know a ton. You just graduated from college and you don't Mm -hmm. have a teaching credential. And in that time, they allow you to go earn a teaching credential and possibly go be a a teacher in that, in that, uh, that school area. And so I was thinking about doing that I was in the final interview. It's actually a really rigorous interview process. But one of the things that they were very um, specific on is that they wanted to take you into very high risk areas like Detroit, right? Um, and they happen to be open up a San Diego area. Now, San Diego, as many of you know, that is a pretty wealthy area, but there are some pockets that are, that are struggling. And I really wanted to uh, go to the San Diego branch because I have a, a younger brother. And I really wanted to um, be able to be around him. He's about eight, nine years younger than I am. So at that time, I'm like 21. He's just about getting to high school Mm, and really wanted to be a a person to um, for him to look up to and really be the person to him that I didn't really have. I didn't have my older brother wasn't really around. My dad wasn't really around for me um, at that time. And I wanted to be that for him. So when I was very specific and saying, hey, I really want to go to San Diego. I don't want to go to Detroit or Chicago or, you know, what have you. I want to be in San Diego. That pretty much put me out the running for that um, because they were like, hey, like there's more high risk areas than Carlsbad, California um, <laughs> and things like that. And which yeah. 100% makes sense. Um, and I'm being facetious. There's other bad places in San Diego. But that that was kind of uh that took me on a path to like the nonprofit space because it really got me thinking about like, what do I really want to do? And I've always thought about it this way, you know, an ideal world with no bills, what would I do for free? That, that was really how I thought about what I wanted to do with my time. And I still try to think about that in an ideal world with no bills. What would I do for free? I try to let that question guide what I do for work mm. because I think that helps me um, in doing what I love and, um, spend time on what I'm passionate about. And that led me to an organization called Fellowship of Christian Athletes, FCA, where really what I did there was I was a mentor, big brother um, to uh, high school athletes. So I got to coach with them. I got to train with them. I got to mentor them, um, guide them on all things, you know, spiritual um, workouts to academic to just like, you know, you should, you know, take a bath, like all of that kind of <laughs> stuff was really what um, I was doing at that at that time. And it was a rough job because it was right out of college or, you know, there's a couple oddball jobs before that, but right out of college. And ultimately what I, like, they gave me this job and they said, hey, Charles, you have a job, but guess what? You need to raise all the money that you ha- you you'll get to, to live on. And I was like, well, that's not really a job if I have to like ask people for money to, to live. And, and I, I was kind of struggling and around the same time I'm about to get married and 
or ask my, you know, um, wife's, my now wife's, you know, father for her hand in marriage. And I'm thinking about how am I going to convince him that, you know, I can somehow take care of his daughter and I don't even know if I'm going to have money, like legitimately the guy right. to go ask people for money. Um, and so that was, those are all the turmoil that I was struggling at the time, but ended up raising around $200,000 in a couple of years I was there, um, which was literally looking like, hey, reaching out to people like you, Chris, or um, businesses or churches or, you know, um, nonprofits and basically asking them to support um, what I'm doing. And they can do that obviously on a one-time basis or on a monthly basis. And that was really the start of um, me getting my feet wet on some kind of salesy kind of uh, mm. um, interaction. 